what's going on everyone welcome back to another video now i thought i'd do a video on the channel around the virus and how to protect yourself from it as a car enthusiast a car owner somebody who relies on their car truck van whatever it is for their income you know and, and to protect yourself from this particular virus you, you all know what i'm talking about it's getting crazy out there so yeah so so if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing hit the thumbs up regardless if you got some sort of value out of this video but i'm going to be jumping into what things you can do as a, as a driver as a vehicle user to protect yourself from the virus i'll be focusing on those things that you may not always think about as a vehicle driver or runner you may not you know be aware of but if you run and drive a vehicle it's going to be applicable to you but probably more so to those that you know taxi lease using their vehicles for various different things having different people in the vehicle or are in and out of the vehicle frequently touching things obviously outside of the vehicle and then coming into your car that you think's nice and clean and is a safe space and just isn't because of the things that you've brought into the car or put onto the car um, you know from transferring um, those germs potentially the virus in question so I'm gonna get into it now and one thing that you may not think of that isn't anything to do with your own personal car but you are in, in contact with quite frequently and hundreds of other people are and this has been named as like a, a number one sort of hot spot for where the virus is transferring and that's petrol pumps you might not believe it but refueling your car assume that pump hasn't been disinfected and assume that the pump's been used by hundreds of of people before you throughout the day that is a hot spot and a germ breeding ground for anybody who's you know use that pump prior to you there's also many things on your car but specifically outside of the car for now petrol pumps is the big one number two would probably have to be your chip and pin as you're using the machine obviously but in petrol stations chip and pin anything that you touch to get in and out door handles obviously i've been kicking quite a lot of doors open recently like literally not hard obviously but yeah using my foot <laughs> so using your foot to get in and out of entrances if possible you know if they haven't got an automatic door also things like um, tire pumps if you've got one in your car it's crap and it's slow use that instead of the one that's out there being used by masses of people it's just you know it's just common sense just protect yourself and isolate yourself as, as many ways that you can in, in as many possible scenarios that you can carry hand sanitizer in your car so then when you come back to your car and you're grabbing things like the exterior door handle holding the a pillow like i do to get into the car grabbing the car handle on the interior to pull yourself in holding the steering wheel grabbing the handbrake letting the handbrake off grabbing the gear stick or putting the car in gear um turning your lights on and off indicator stalks stereo adjustments these are all things that you've now touched before sanitizing your own hands and the exterior ones i get you probably won't be able to get away from unless the hand sanitizer's on you and in, in your pocket or whatever but these are all things now that could potentially hold and harbor that particular virus and on hard surfaces stainless steel is is the big one apparently but on hard surfaces hard smooth surfaces specifically this virus can live for days so it's those sort of areas on your own car that you can you know give an anti-back wipe to that you can look at and and think do you know what i'm not going to touch it until i've sanitized my hands first and make sure you're doing a you know, proper job of that you know it's scary scary times isn't it and i'm making this video to try and bring awareness to people that might not have thought about these things previously Previously, but anything that you touch after touching something that's like a communal or a shared sort of thing you know like like a the, the best one is probably the uh, door handles and also the chip and pin machines you know if your purchase is over 30 pounds i personally have been putting 29.99 in my in my fuel tank just so i can use contactless you know it's, it's just stuff like that just to be aware of if you were just you sent a mirror if you were just any of your controls or your buttons on your dashboard you know putting the hazards on pressing the horn all the points in your steering wheel the interior door handle anything on your car that you could have touched after touching something that's like a door handle and then going back to your car and you've basically spread it all over your car you know so moving from external things on internal things and things on the car itself to things that you can do to and, and use to prevent things hand sanitizer is a good one you can keep that on you secondly antibacterial wipes you know if you go around the handles for example on your car on the exterior after you finish using your car or before you start using the car or even the, the boot latch 
switch on the outside of the car, you know, that's something that you probably won't think of, used very rarely, but still something, or someone could have even tried your door handles and you wouldn't even know. So, you know, antibacterial wipes, maybe just keep them in your dash. Or one thing that's been mentioned is using disposable gloves, you know, like uh, latex gloves, nitro gloves, whatever, keeping them in your glove box. That is what the glove box is for. That's what the glove box was designed for. And trust me, if I could do like a, you know, a Wolf of Wall Street car access with my uh, big toe, I probably would give it a go, do you know what I mean? But. I'm, uh, I'm only a man, I'm not a monkey, so I have to use my hands. So gloves in the glove box is a good one. Hand sanitizer, keep it on you. And you know, antibacterial wipes, providing you can get those things, obviously. If not, then perhaps a damp cloth with some, you know, like white spirit or something on. I won't obviously recommend using it on your paint or on your interior, but something that you could wipe your hands on and keep it in a plastic bag, maybe, if you are finding it difficult to get. Things like hand sanitizer, antibacterial wipes, and bog roll. <laughs> you know? Oh. Those people that are hoarding, by the way, they're just making it worse for everybody else. They're making everybody else panic by because people are seeing a lack of stock in something and thinking, shit, I need to go out, I need to get those things, I need to buy that thing because there's only a few of them left. It triggers like an instinct, I think, that was developed back in like the hunter gatherer days you know so anyway i'm probably going to call this video here i know it's a very very short video i just wanted to bring some awareness and try and help some people that could be vulnerable that could be you know struggling um to, to get the head round of, of how things can spread so easily and it is thankfully not an airborne virus it is you know contact based it's touch touch you know can be passed through water vapor in people's breath which is why the two meter rules come into it so there are a lot of things that you need to be aware of and keeping a two meter distance and a queue we're british we're just not used to doing that sort of thing but these are all things that you can be aware of and that you can do and that you can you know impact and influence in your own environment and, and change in your own your own actions so that's it for now thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one bye for now